On the line right now is John Zogby. John, good morning. Good morning, Bill. Uh, have you ever, could you ever imagine uh, 20 years ago where you would say, oh, I can't wait to get home to see the live White House briefing every day live on TV. I mean, that's what, that's how much we're covering this White House. I know. And uh, I wonder how many people actually do watch it inside the Beltway. They love oh, yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah. And, and, and they're... There are junkies as well. It is a bit numbing, though, isn't it? I assume you're not calling me inside the Beltway. You're calling me the junkie. I, <laughs> you, you are right in your assumption. <laughs> <laughs> I am the junkie. Um, I do wonder how many people, uh, how many people watch. But it is. Uh, I don't know what it is. There's a there's a give and take there between reporters and and uh, and and really earlier. Who was the guy earlier that was just. Um, Sean Spicer. Sean Spicer. Oh, that yeah. was just, uh, I mean, you never knew what you were going to see. Poor These guy. have always been contentious, though, these yeah. press briefings. They, yeah. they, they were never, you know, a, a picnic. Uh, and, you know, I, I would say especially, you know, going back to Lyndon Johnson, you know, and questions, that, that's when we really began to question what the, the imperial presidency and the, uh, uh, lying about the war in Vietnam. Mm, and then, yeah. Poor Ron Ziegler. Um, he had the job for Nixon. Um, oh yeah, and, and that was those were torturous. Yeah, I can only imagine those days. And then when you look back on some of that stuff, uh, this doesn't seem so crazy. It seems crazy, but there's been craziness before, I guess. There's been craziness before, but but th this this is uh, this is a whole new level. Uh, let's talk about if we could. Um, first of all, a lot of on this on the survey, and the results yeah. are up on our on our website. I think it's very very interesting. The numbers, uh, the hospital mm -hmm. downtown, fifty fifty. Here's something that I'm getting a lot of people asking, mm -hmm. and that is um, what uh, what percentage do you have that were you able to break down the numbers on the hospital? So Utica versus Oneida County versus yeah. the entire region. Yep, yeah, Utica. Uh, just the, the folks uh, from Utica itself were strongly in favor of the hospital. Or I should say more, much more in favor of it than the average of 50-50. Uh, wow, that is, that is very surprising because I think most people believe that the no hospital group um, would, would have dominated that for the city of Utica. And you're saying not true. Not true, no. My recollection was that about 57, 58 percent of mm. Uticans supported the hospital, mm. 40, what, the remainder, 42 or 43, uh, opposed it. You know, uh, that's still a, a, an opposition. I, I, I should add, though, that remember we had the degrees in there. Mm -hmm. uh, right. and so of those who were unsupportive, you, you had a, a much larger uh, number of people non-supportive than who were, I should say, uh, not supportive at all yeah, versus yeah. those who were very uh, uh, most supportive. Uh, interesting, though. And, well, especially because uh, they're going to be the ones that are their taxes are going for the parking garage and right, a lot of the expenses right. with that. Yeah. Exactly. I, you know, the opposition seemed to grow. Uh, uh, Herkimer County residents, for, for example, you know, less That's supportive. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so uh, do you think it's people that don't want to drive into the city? Um, that don't want to drive into the city to go to the hospital. That could be a factor, or it could simply be that this is the only exposure that they have. The Utica, downtown Utica, is is still yeah. you know, perceived as uh, as maybe unsavory. They don't have a connection uh, with downtown in in any way, and uh, what they read about is what what they know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> crime or or mm -hmm. or an image. Of, uh, like that. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Very interesting. I never would have expected that. Uh, but now that you explain it, it certainly certainly makes sense. Okay. Um, let's talk, if you could, about how you broke these down and yeah. and the tribes. Um, these are uh, this is a, this is new terminology for people. Yes, it is. And these are tribes that are based on uh, folks who answered questions about personal attributes and personal aspirations. Um, you know, what are the values and, and mottos, you know, that, that drive their lives? And, and so among those who responded to the survey, the, this was the portrait. Um, the largest single tribe among your listeners I thought was interesting. Those are the pers persistence. Those are people who are, are defined, they say, by some form of, of tragedy in their lives and who 
are either struggling to survive or living a, at a day at a time, but are feel driven to to uh, <clears throat> to survive tragedy. That is your largest single element. That was eighteen percent hmm. of the respondents. The second group does not surprise me. <clears throat> um, land of the free. Uh, there were fifteen percent. That is fundamentally a, a conservative group. Um, less so about traditional values, though uh, that that is an element of them. Much more so libertarian. Um, you know, don't tread on me. Uh, uh, opposition to big government, tending uh, uh, Republican as far as politics is concerned. But uh, you know, sort of picture the. The Marlboro Man, um, you know John Wayne, uh, that kind of rugged individualism. Uh, the third largest group, fourteen percent. I thought this was interesting. Self perfectionists. Mm. Those are people who uh, define themselves on their uh, on their ambition, their desire to succeed, to do something very creative in life. Uh, in fact, their ambition drives their life, their, their career, uh, their, their need to write the great American novel. And the fourth group um, was uh, the dutifuls. And those are, those are the most conservative of, uh, of, of the tribes. And these are people who abide by the law and have no patience for those who don't. As I've said this many times before in public talks, these are the people that you'll never catch uh, parking in the handicapped zone, uh, saying, you know, I, I'll, I'll, be, I'll only be about 15 minutes. These, these people will drive, um, you know, uh, 20 columns over uh, in, in a parking lot mm. before they will uh, uh, break any kind of law. And so the, these are, you know, solid conservative citizens. Now you have your element of of God Squad, those who are driven by faith. That was, that was ten percent of of your group. And then, of course, not only were there happy hedonists, um, I'm I recall you said I'm talking to a few of them. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> it was really surprised me. I, I didn't see myself in that category. Um, so describe the the hedonist category. Describe them. I believe all three of us. Are. All three of us ended up in there. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I, a, a life um, defined mainly by fun, um, uh, <laughs> uh, for the, the pursuit of, of fun, um, uh, not without values, I mean, not in any way not caring about other people. That's uh, not what it is. It's just an emphasis uh, on, um, uh, you know, the desire to uh, enjoy life and <clears throat> be optimistic about it. Maybe a little too strong to say, eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow you die. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but maybe the day after tomorrow you die. Okay. That is quite interesting that all three of us ended up in that uh, in that category. I was quite surprised there. And then the other, you have a few other categories in there. Uh, the other categories, uh, they're uh, just the same number as Happy Hedonists, about 7%. Go with the flow. Those are folks that seek uh, moderation and zen in their lives. Um, we did not mention a 7% as well of the adventurous. Yeah. Those are people who look for, for a challenge, who love to travel and, and be mobile. Um, then we, we get small. There's a 4% creators. Those are the entrepreneurs, the, the artists, the, um, the f folks that enjoy uh, uh, culture. Uh, outsiders, there are only 3% of that. That's kind of a good thing. These are people who uh, really enjoy being alone, uh, and as they say, especially when there's a room full of other people. Mm, they, they love being alone. Now, l let me just kick up a little dust here, yeah. if I may. All right. what, Tenney versus Brindisi, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Tenney's support was very strong among the God Squad, the land of the free, the libertarians, um, among the one true path, those are um, folks that are fundamentalist in terms of, of religion um, uh, and religious values, uh, and outsiders. 
and Brindisi, um, very strong among go with the flow, very strong. Uh, the happy hedonists, the persistence, the self-perfectionists, the adventurists, the dutifuls, even though they're conservative, I yeah, thought that was yeah, interesting, yeah. And, and the creators. So at this point in time, seven of the 11 tribes with Brindisi and four of the 11 with Tenny, although the four with Tenny are extremely strong in her yeah. case, and those are larger tribes. Right, would you say that some of, those, uh, some of those probably would never vote for a Democrat um, just because of the D next to the name? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> just like there are some among the creators who we would never um, vote for a Republican. Over yeah. a Republican. Mm -hmm. Yep. Interesting. Right, any other big ones that you want to highlight before we let you go? Um, nope. I think that's, uh, uh, that's uh, about it. The outsiders support the hospital. 80%. That, that I find very interesting. Me I, too. Uh, because I just clearly would have thought Jim Zeka would have been one of the outsiders. <laughs> but apparently not. <laughs> apparently after all this, not. Uh, listen, this was a an awesome experiment, and I think what we learned is we were able to get through some pretty decent accuracy based on the demographic, demographics of this region. Yes, you know, and to the the a few folks out there who challenged the methodology, look, every industry is changing, um, and and so is ours, and we're very much looking for new and innovative methods to to do polling. The old call the landline and oh, how nice! I've been yeah. waiting for you to call to ask me questions. Those days are long yeah. gone. Yeah, I mean uh, it's uh, it's hard today to find people that have a landline. Um, it's crazy. Uh, all right, John, very interesting stuff. We really appreciate it, and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thanks, you too, and it was a pleasure working with you and your team. We had a blast with this. This was really uh, positive and insightful. Insightful. Uh, okay, Take thanks. Care. Thank okay, you, John. John Zogby.